Live and local, 1480 WHBC. The following program is sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies. Good morning and welcome to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. We're glad you joined us this morning. Before we begin, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Mercy Medical Center, Studio Arts and Glass, and, of course, our technical producer, J.D. DeAngelis. In the studio with me is Brad White, compounding pharmacist and vice president of Medicine Center Pharmacies, and our special guest, Jolene Bloomquist, home visiting manager, and Regina Falters, early intervention manager from Help Me Grow. Good morning, ladies, and welcome to the show. Thank you. Have you ever noticed how quickly toddlers and young children are able to navigate a smartphone, tablet, or even a TV remote? While we are amazed at their skill, we recognize that this might come at a cost. One recent study showed that every 30 minutes of screen time increased a child's risk of speech delay by 49%. Think about that. A similar study showed that children who began watching TV before 12 months of age and who watched more than two hours of TV per day were six times more likely to have language delays. Today our guests are from Help Me Grow. It is Ohio's evidence-based parent support program that encourages early prenatal and well baby care, as well as assisting families in finding therapies and services for children with de- <coughs> developmental delays. Help Me Grow is funded by the Ohio Department of Health and Department of Developmental Disabilities. We'd like to remind our listeners that today's program will be also available on our podcast, which can be downloaded from the App Store on your mobile phone. Look for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy, and you can listen to any of our programs anytime. If you have a question, you can post it up on our live Facebook feed today. So, ladies, um, please introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about each of you, and as well as your responsibilities with Help Me Grow. Sure. I'm, I'm Jolene Bloomquist, and I'm the Home Visiting Manager. Um, I've been in early childhood for over 20 years. Um, I started in um, the child care field and have been with Help Me Grow for about 10 years, and I um, have always just loved infants and toddlers. Um, My um, role, in addition to managing the program, um, most importantly, is supporting the home visitors as they're going out into the homes and supporting families. Are are there lots of home visitors? Um, We have eight home visitors. Okay. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm Regina Falter, and I am the Early Intervention Supervisor for Stark and Carroll County. Um, I have worked in early intervention for 11 years, previously as a developmental specialist. And it's my job to receive the child referrals, distribute them to our <coughs> appropriate service coordinators, and ensure that families receive the EI services that they are looking for for their child. Okay. Um, I understand, Jolene, you represent home visiting, the home visiting program. And Regina, you... Re- represent the early intervention program. Can you each explain the functions of Help Me Grow in your departments and how you function? Sure. So um, both programs are free and voluntary, home-based early childhood programs for children prenatal to three. Um, They're actually, the the two parts can be confusing sometimes, and so we really appreciate the opportunity to help explain some of the similarities and the differences um, in the two programs. So home visiting is um, provides information, support, during pregnancy, and then once baby's born, we are empowering parents um, with school skills, tools, and confidence to nurture their baby as they grow and develop, make sure they're developing appropriately, and just help them with that parent engagement piece. Okay. Then early intervention service coordination's primary function is to coordinate services for parents of young children with developmental delays or disabilities. When a parent or child provider has a concern for a child's development, they contact EI and then we will conduct developmental screenings and evaluations along with parent interviews and to determine what, if any, services um, the child may need and what, how we can assist the family in finding those. So maybe you sort of answered this, but so who do you serve? I mean, and how do you get clients, I guess is the right way to put it. Mm-hmm. So home visiting um, begins prenatally, if at all possible. Um, and so any pregnant or you know new mom, whether it's your first child or your fifth child, that just wants additional support and guidance um, can give us a call or maybe one of their health providers will refer them to our program, you know, just for that additional support and parent education, really. Early intervention, we serve children birth to th- age three. Um, who have significant developmental delays, which can result from a variety of reasons. We have children who are premature, children who are born with 
a developmental disability, children who have significant speech delays, children with autism, it, the list just could go on and on. Um, and sometimes we just have children that are a little bit behind for no real reason that we can ever find, but we give them the support they need to make their milestones. I can picture, maybe it's a little early to, say, to talk about this, but I can picture many, many children sitting in a bouncy chair in front of the TV laughing, um, you know, as a babysitter, basically. Right. And I grew up in an era where we had three TV channels, three, five, and eight, you know, and they, <laughs> yes. cl- they were off at midnight. <laughs> And there wasn't much to watch. Maybe a couple kids' programs, you know, Mr. Rogers and, you know, came along and some of the other things. But my gosh, now with 3,000 channels, you know, and nothing really, uh, more than one or two, there's still really only a couple children's programs as near as I can figure. Cartoons and, you know, some other stuff. And the cartoons have gotten nasty and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So what do we do with this? It's just, it, it's... Uh, it's just amazing when the phone comes along and okay they're on the phone and and, Mm -hmm. uh, games on the phone and uh, constant so anyway maybe i set the pace here but i know it's later on (laughs) later on in the well i think that segues into our next question pretty well so (laughs) you generally work with children that are under the age of three so why such young why such a young age well children's brains actually grow rapidly and form more neural connections before birth and in the first few years of life than any other time in their lives. So um, it's critical during that time to really make that connection and have those parents know how to interact and play with their children. In fact, 85% of a person's brain is developed by the time they are three. Hmm. So that is key to making sure that these children get what they need early on. Um, And it starts prenatally. A mother's health and even talking to their baby in the womb is so important to start that development. Um, Babies need lots of loving words. They need a positive parent-child interaction to grow and develop not just their language skills, but social-emotional. If a baby is responded to immediately, then they're going to feel secure. They're going to feel loved. They're going to feel self-worth. And if you engage face-to-face with them on a consistent basis, they're going to learn social skills and language skills. And all of these things are what will they'll use for their lifetime. School success, I mean, just forever, they're going to use those skills that they developed in early life. All right, so I understand that one of the goals that Help Me Grow is to encourage positive parenting, empowering parents, and the skills and tools to nurture the healthy growth of their children. How about some examples of the tools and skills that you help provide? So um, our tools are a little different, and so um, the home visiting program um, uses a national evidence-based home visiting model and curriculum. Um, The model is called Healthy Families America, and the curriculum is called Growing Great Kids, which is a perfect name for that. Um, So Growing Great Kids is the curriculum, and it walks the home visitor and the parent through stages of development. Um, It provides um, activities for parents to do on a daily basis, just during their daily routines. Um, And then periodically, we will complete what's called an ages and stages questionnaire that helps us gauge how the child is doing developmentally, make sure they're meeting all their milestones. And if they're not, what can we do to intervene um, and do some of that, really to prevent from going to Regina's program? You know, if we can keep them out of early intervention, then we're doing a good job because they're meeting all their milestones. Um, And, you know, when a mommy is looking at their child and having those positive interactions and we can role model that and show mom, look how well she uh, um, responds to you doing that, that shows the mom and hopefully teaches the mom to then engage the child. You know, and okay, and you're talking about a lot of moms, but I'm just yeah. thinking as you describe this, I'm thinking about to being a new father and thinking, yes, dads, too. you don't get training yes. for this, so you know, no, you right. you mm-hmm. try to use your instincts, but yes. sometimes it's really nice to have a roadmap. So yeah. I think some of your things speak true to, yes. you know, let's start off with the best practice and not learn to correct something that maybe you didn't intend to go wrong, but it yes. did. So yes, and then Regina can speak on what they use in their program. Yes. And in, most children at this age spend most of their time with their parent. It's the first teacher. And I don't know that parents always realize the significance of that right away, that they're the one their child learns everything from. So what we try to do is come into the home, talk with the family, you know, meet the child, and then we, I, um, I guess we just try to help them figure out what's going right in their day, where they need a little help, and then we can help them find little things that they can fit into the routine to change it up. So 
if the child's having problems with steps, we come into the home, we evaluate, see where there's how how their steps work, and can we put a step somewhere else in the home so the child just becomes part of it. They just have to walk up and down the steps a couple times mm-hmm. a day, and it's just natural. It's not therapy. The therapist isn't there doing it. It's just part of everything they do. Yeah. And how can we fit language into diaper changing and mm-hmm. bath time? So if the brain is developed 85%, you said, mm-hmm. by year three? Three, yes. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a member of the Canton Rotary Club, and, and we have exchange students from Europe, and occasionally from you know Central and South America. Mm-hmm. And every one of these uh, students who gets here, uh, at least in my history with the club, is that they speak English very, very well. And they start teaching these kids in kindergarten English and other languages. Where do we go go wrong here in the teaching education process? I mean... The best time to learn dual languages is from right from the beginning, mm-hmm. yeah. right from the start. And we have a few families who do speak multiple languages in the home, and those children do really well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We all, we see that there's sometimes a delay when you're doing a bilingual family. They'll have a, a little language delay, and then it takes off, and mm. they have both languages. So, oh, interesting. yeah, the brain really works to pick that up and make it work. I've consistently read that it's harder to learn a second language the older you get. Yes. So, yes. Or at least to speak it especially. Mm-hmm. So, interesting. You know, when we traveled to France and England a few years ago on a, an assignment and we walked into this hotel in, in Paris and and there was a desk clerk, a young lady behind the counter. And um, in a period of about, I would say, somewhere between three and four minutes, she spoke four different languages to four different cultures, um, very clear. And I remember my wife saying, um, gee, I wonder what country this this girl is from. And, and she turned to us and she said, this girl is from, is Dutch in English perfect english so i just it, that just struck me as you know how far behind are we and it just mm. you, you know i don't it, it doesn't seem like there's any impetus to go anywhere with this mm. foreign languages and stuff yes no i mean and now we've got our brains cluttered the kids brains cluttered with phones and yeah. cartoons and and you know games and all that kind of stuff and, and um you see Older kids sitting in a room, too, of communicating with each other over their phones yes. instead of mm-hmm. directly talking to each other. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. How do we turn this back? <laughs> yeah, One kid at a time, we're right? We have to say us, but <laughs> <laughs> it's just, we're trying. It's just <laughs> absolutely bizarre. I mean, yeah. the Internet's a wonderful thing, but <laughs> it just all of a sudden has really got twisted, and I guess it's time for a break. <clears throat> You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Have you heard about Tap On It? It's a new way to get great coupons on your smartphone from all types of vendors. Hi, Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacies. So you text the words Tap On It, that's Tap On It, T-A-P-O-N-I-T, 82928. Tap on the link that comes up and up comes your coupons. The Medicine Center Pharmacy coupons are buy $30 worth of merchandise at the Medicine Center Pharmacy and get $10 off. You can also earn a free first aid kit. This is a great way to save money. Tap on it at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. With a heart attack, every second counts. Every moment the blood supply to your heart is cut off or reduced leads to heart damage or death. Mercy Medical Center can stop a heart attack in record time. Mercy is the only hospital in the nation that can open a blocked artery right in the ER just minutes after arrival, saving lives and preventing further heart muscle damage. That's because Mercy's Emergency Chest Pain Center was America's first to achieve full accreditation and the first to install a fully functional cardiac catheterization lab just a few steps away from our ER doors. The average time in the U.S. from ER arrival to opening of a blocked heart artery is 64 minutes. At Mercy, thanks to our ER cath lab and the area's most experienced emergency heart care team, it's faster. 
we're capable of opening a blocked artery in as little as five minutes. If you have heart attack symptoms, get to Mercy. We can stop a heart attack in record time. To learn more, visit cantonmercy.org slash heart. Wendy here from Studio Arts and Glass. I'd like to invite you to our annual Garden of the Arts show, Friday and Saturday, June 14th and 15th from 9 until 8 p.m. You'll find fabulous, vibrant, colored summer jewelry, horsehair pottery, and tons of hummingbird feeders. Come for the great food and La Pizzeria's famous brownies. We're on Apple Grove and 77 in North Canton. Or find us at studioartsandglass.com. Are you tired of spending time sorting your medication? Hi, pharmacist Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacy. A locally owned Health Mart pharmacy, whether you are a caregiver or personally take medications, our pill packets will change how you take your medication forever. Instead of multiple pill bottles, you'll want to receive one easy dispensing box that contains all of your medications in individual packets. Organized by date, time, with instructions clearly labeled, it's simple, convenient, and safe. Call or stop by your local medicine center pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia, where wellness begins. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Brad and I are talking with Jolene Bloomquist and Regina Falter from Help Me Grow. Have a question posted on our live Facebook feed. Okay, before the break, we were talking about uh, some of the tools you try to both use to uh, assist new parents in learning how to uh, help their kids develop since we don't get manuals at birth. So what about um, eligibility requirements to participate? How does someone become eligible? Eligible. So for the home visiting program, our target age is prenatal until three months of age. And the reason for that is that research has shown that um, that is the time where you get the best birth outcomes and reduce infant mortality if you can catch them Mm -hmm. as early as possible. Mm -hmm. But we do enroll up to age two. Um, There's also an income requirement in the simplest way. Um, to know is that if a family is um, eligible for WIC or Medicaid, they will automatically qualify. But if you're unsure and, you know, you think a family might qualify for the program, the best thing to do is just call and we'll sort it out for you. How how do they find out about you? I mean, I I guess I don't have any young children, so I don't know whatever, but but how do they find out about you? We do outreach events and, you know, lots of different places with um, different agencies, health fairs, baby fairs. We try to reach out to doctors <clears throat> and, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, nurses, pediatricians, pediatricians, hospitals. I'm guessing mm-hmm. referral is probably a big thing. I mean, it's one thing for the parents to learn about it, but I'm guessing that maybe referrals from someone who's worked with you is probably the biggest resource for you all. Absolutely. Yes, it is. So. Yes, it is. And then for early intervention, child services is required to make uh, our referrals to us. Right mm, in the okay. beginning, so we get a lot of those. Any costs to the family? No. Early intervention is free as well as home visiting. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yes. How about one of your one of your success stories? I mean, it just has to be. Oh my god! I know that's a hard one. <laughs> There's so many <laughs> <laughs> wonderful well, stories good. to tell. I think for early intervention, just measuring that a parent feels like empowered that they can help their child in any situation that they don't have to wait for the professional. To come and tell them what to do, they they realize that they're so in tune to their child that they can make those decisions and and change their environment just a little bit, and it'll make such a big difference. So if we can walk away with a parent who feels confident in themselves, I think that is a, a sure. huge success for us. Yeah, and I would agree. And you know, we even get teen moms, and you know, they have family support or not, but you know, just being there for them and teaching them the the new ways of parenting. You know, because there's the old school way of parenting and the new school way of parenting. Um, And and sometimes you have, you know, grandparents saying, oh, no, you can put your baby on their belly. It's fine. And, you know, we're saying, no, no, don't put your baby on your belly. It's not safe. And um, just for them to be able to realize that what they do for their child matters and not to put themselves first, but to put their children first. And then for that child to turn three and go off to preschool and that parent to feel so successful. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of grandchildren raising parents as you're raising children, as you know. Yes, yes. Different approach for you or uh, as an organization or with a grandparent compared to the parent? Uh, I think for us it just it really just depends on on each individual caregiver's thoughts process. We just try to adapt to what they you know you're going into somebody's home they're and they're 
they're the professional when it comes to that child. So it doesn't matter if it's a grandparent, aunt, uncle, foster care. We try to adapt to what works into that home and then make it fit for what the child needs. I had a lady sitting in my one of my stores about a week ago, and she was elderly, and she had two ch- children, young children with her. And I said, oh, I said, are you babysitting today? She said, no. She said, I picked these children up in April, and I guess I have them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So is that what you run into? Absolutely, yes. I mean, Absolutely. And, you know, they raised their children how many years ago, yeah. and they say, in, oh, in my another, gosh, In another I world, basically. Yeah, I you know? forget, and I just really need the help, and I need some guidance. Yeah. And so we might not do our curriculum the way we would with a first-time mom mm-hmm. because they know the basics, um, but some mm-hmm. of that new stuff again and just that support of, oh, my gosh, I forgot about doing that with my children is really important. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I see... <laughs> I see, see them with less patience because I feel that way. Oh, for sure. With yes. yeah. our own, my own grandchildren, you know, that why would you do that? You know, I mean, that, that kind of stuff, which, of course, never happened when they were raising their children. Mm-hmm. So you have to basically re-educate, yes. re-educate the grandparents here, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And in a lot of cases, they're old, a lot much older, they're tireder. Uh, mm-hmm. They don't have the energy. Especially um, when they get a newborn, you know, yes. straight from the hospital. Wow. Yes. Mom's on drugs yeah. or something, and, you know, yes. all of a sudden they're taking care of this mm-hmm. newborn, and they're not sleeping, and, yeah, yeah. it's a struggle sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, can families receive both home visiting and early intervention? Yes, yes. We work so closely together. Um, we have families that have both at the same time. Or sometimes we'll tag team and just determine what needs the family really has and what we need to make a priority first. And then other times they'll start with one program and then their needs will change and maybe transfer to the other program because that's the type of support that they need. So, yeah. Okay. But not at the same time? Or they not? can have it at the same okay. time as well, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're looking at the bottom of the hour here, so it's time to a break. You're listening to, time for a break. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Reliable as ever on News Talk 1480 WHBC. Hi, this is Brad White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Perhaps you've gotten the urge to venture outside and clean up the garage or do some yard work, resulting in muscle aches and pains. If you have sore muscles or aching joints, you may want to consider a prescription pain-relieving cream available with a prescription at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Our pharmacists can work with you and your physician to get topical pain creams that can be rubbed directly on the source, reducing inflammation and pain. Topical creams avoid troublesome side effects and dependency issues that can be caused by oral medications. The Medicine Center Pharmacy has an accredited compounding laboratory, and it is your source for custom medications. Custom compounded pain-relieving creams, available only at the Medicine Center Pharmacy, where wellness begins. Visit us at MedShopRx.com for the pharmacy nearest you. That's MedShopRx.com. Wendy here from Studio Arts and Glass. I'd like to invite you to our annual Garden of the Arts show, Friday and Saturday, June 14th and 15th from 9 until 8 p.m. You'll find fabulous, vibrant, colored summer jewelry, horsehair pottery, and tons of hummingbird feeders. Come for the great food and La Pizzeria's famous brownies. We're on Apple Grove and 77 in North Canton. Or find us at studioartsandglass.com. The Half Off and Up by Store in Louisville just got in a new load of furniture from a major department store. And also lots of new drugstore merchandise from large drug chains. Of course, all this merchandise, furniture and more is 50% off. And as a special gift to our loyal customers, we're reducing all of our furniture an additional 50% off. That's right, 50% off and an additional 50% off. Don't miss this Memorial Day sale. You'll regret it. The Half Off and Up by Store in Louisville. 
See us on Facebook or halfoffhotbuys.com. We continue to reload the Half Off and Hot Buy store in Louisville with new merchandise. Just in, ladies and girls Levi's, $48 value, $11.99. Beach towels, $5.95, and lots of coffee, K-cups and more. You won't believe the prices for the Starbucks coffee. Also, we continue our special prices on furniture and many, many toys, health and beauty, laundry detergent, and much, much more. Don't miss this sale. You'll regret it. See us on Facebook or halfoffhotbuys.com. Your severe weather station. News Talk 1480 WHBC. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your host and pharmacist, Paul White. Today, Brad and I are discussing children's development with Ohio's Help Me Grow program. We've got a lot more to cover this morning, so let's get back to the show. So what's the intake process look like? Uh, sound like how do you handle it all that mm-hmm. sort of thing so if if a family makes a referral for themselves um central intake is where they call and central intake will take all their information and send it to one of us whoever's the appropriate program um, and we'll connect them to a home visitor or service coordinator and get moving but if a professional makes a referral then central intake will have to make contact with the family by phone and so sometimes that's where the barrier is um, and so we encourage professionals to talk to that, talk to the family about, you know, you will get a phone call for maybe a number you don't recognize. You want to make sure you answer or call them back because that's how the process will go. Or better yet, if you're a professional and you're sitting there with the family, you might want to call with the family so that you can then put them on the phone um, to be able to make that process a little um, easier. But once uh, we get the referral, then you know we call the family, explain a little more about the program, schedule that first visit. And then the first few visits are really, I think for both programs, very much relationship building, getting to know the family, what are their needs, what are they wanting out of the program, lots of paperwork stuff, you know, things like that. Um, and then for early intervention, Regina, you have some additional things that that the service coordinators right. do. Right. Now, now, all of this is done in their home. They don't come in to their your home. office. Right. Okay. Yes. Correct. Mm-hmm. Done okay. in the home. Mm-hmm. So then after we do the intake paperwork for early intervention, um, we do an evaluation or assessment to see what the child's concerns or needs are and where things are going well. And that is usually done with the service coordinator and then uh, the person who is important in the area of need, <laughs> speech therapist, physical therapist, occupational therapist. So they'll, all, they'll come out together takes about an hour and then after that they kind of come back to our team meetings talk a little bit about what's going on with the family make sure we have the right people involved and we go back out we make a plan of service an ifsp Mm -hmm. and then get to get therapy started for the family and the child and i'm sort of getting from both of you that you have resources at sort of at your fingertips like speech therapists and Yes. Maybe even a, a, a visit to a physician or, or you know, things along that line. Mm-hmm. So, yes. Um, does that happen very long, often that you have to take them to a doctor or a, a physician? We can come up with recommendations. If you have a child with a speech concern, often the speech therapist will uh, recommend a hearing evaluation if it hasn't been done, things like that. Mm-hmm. Service coordinators have gone with families to the doctor visits if it, if it seems like it's going to be helpful. Um, but yes, you know, the main service providers, once they get started in an early intervention, our therapists are, yeah. Now we used to have hearing tests, visual tests in the schools in their elementary years. Is that still going on? I have it, no idea. It, yes, at the school age, yes, it is. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yes. Even preschool. My son's in preschool, and he okay. has dental, vision, hearing, all okay. of those things as well. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, well, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, okay, so... You're visiting, you spend, you say, an hour? You About an hour, give or take, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that gives you enough time to basically evaluate the situation? or y- Yeah, sometimes the evaluation, it's kind of the older the child, you, you know, you go out to evaluate a three-month-old, it doesn't take long. <laughs> you go out for a two-and-a-half-year-old, it takes a little longer. Right. Sure. Yeah, and then, it, you know, if the child has a little strange or anxiety, you, you, we run into <laughs> all those kind of things that you might have to deal with. But for the most part, I'd say an hour the evaluation but you're interviewing both the parents and the child yes okay. yes because again parents they know their child better than anybody so they can give <laughs> us their, the information so what happens at three years old at three years old for early intervention um we start working right before three actually we start working with the school districts at three they become the, the lead agency 
Hmm. So we start a transition process. We have a transition meeting with the districts. We kind of get the family ready. It's kind of it's a big handoff. We're, they're used to people coming to their home and working on those things, and then it kind of mm-hmm. becomes an educational environment. So it's a lot different. We just try to prepare them for that. And at three, if the child needs still needs services, they get an IEP, educational uh, plan, and transition over to the schools, to the preschool. In my day in school, in, in elementary and in, in middle school, which we never called it that, but back in my time, these kids were just pushed aside um, and really not um, involved in a any sort of a, a, a reg- education program that would result in success. Right. What do we do now in the schools? Schools, uh, at well, starting at age three, as long as they're showing a, a delay, they have regular classrooms. Some kids are integrated into the regular classrooms. We have preschools that have a lot of peers. They try to do a 50-50 match. So you have children who have an educational plan, 50% of them are typical peers to make good role models. Mm. And then, of course, the, there are some more exclusive programs like at, at Eastgate where uh, we're looking for children who really have medical needs that are harder to meet in the, in the classrooms. But our goal is to get everyone back to their district. Sure. Now, do you meet with the teachers or just the, re- the administration and that sort of thing? Uh, for the transition meeting, we're meeting with administration. And then when we come to actually writing the IEP, there are preschool teachers involved, too. So they know what's going on mm-hmm. in the classroom, what's going to work for the child. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, it's interesting to me that the sessions that you do for Help Me Grow take place in the child's home. So I'm thinking that that's probably a benefit for both parent and child, given familiar surroundings. Correct. And mm-hmm. might help you identify some things that maybe you could recommend to help maybe uh, tweak things to help make the situation better for the outcome. Would I be right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Anything that you want to share with respect to how important it is to do things in the home in addition to what we've already said? or Well, and like, you know, like you said, research shows that when you're working with a family in their natural environment, everyone's more comfortable. The parent's more comfortable. The child's more comfortable. You know, you can utilize things that they have at their disposal to teach and coach the family to work on their development. You know, you don't have to go to some um, facility and use special equipment. You can use what you have in your home. You don't have to go out and buy expensive toys. You can use what you have around your house and make toys or, you know, use drums with your pans and just all of those things. And so when we're in their home, we can really promote that type Mm -hmm. of thing but we do have families that are uncomfortable meeting in the home and so we meet i don't know we meet at libraries daycares restaurants restaurants especially (laughs) if you have a child who's having trouble going out so you know having you know they're throwing temper tantrums at the store or they're not doing well at a restaurant and the family really wants to do those sorts of things we might meet them at a taco bell or a mcdonald's or Mm -hmm. you know go to giant eagle with them or something like that Mm -hmm. and and help coach the parent through how they can help the child get through those um, scenarios. Mm-hmm. Okay. Earlier we mentioned the importance of limiting screen time and uh, the benefits that that can provide. How about um, how about you scare us all and uh, tell us what you recommend? And I'm thinking that if it applies to the kids, it probably should apply to the adults. But um, you know, you tell us what uh, what the current research shows and um, what kind of path we're on at the moment. So. Yeah, it's a hard one. It, 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 they really recommend under 12 months, especially, no mm-hmm. screen time. At and all. so hmm. that is hard for parents to hear. Mm-hmm. But that is that critical. And that's TV, thing. too. So, that you know, TV, I'm guessing most phones. people listening are thinking screen time and they're thinking phones, tablets. Exactly. Yeah, so. that can even be TV because yeah. they, yes, they like the the lights and the sounds and, and that sort of thing. And that's okay if the TV's on in the background or whatever. But to kind of enforce that your child sits in front of the TV, like you said earlier, in a bouncy seat with the babysitter, you know, um, you know that is not what the children needs. Their brain is not developing everything that it needs to develop when you, you're not having those face-to-face mm-hmm. conversations with them. So. Well, one of the stats that's before me that Nancy came up with on the research is that Children who began watching television before 12 months and who watch more than two hours a day were six times more likely to have language. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's amazing. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when they're using those phones and those tablets, their vision, 
um, we talked to um, an eye doctor. One of my colleagues said she was um, at the eye doctor, and she said, hey, I have a question. Have, are you seeing children with issues with their eyes sooner because of all of the close-up screen time? And, and he said, absolutely, because, you know, it's just not good for you to sit and stare at that all the time. Right, and you don't look out in the distance, so they're not developing that far distance. They're being oh. very nearsighted mm-hmm. because they're just staring at that screen huh. right in front of them. Never thought of that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So it really does affect. I'm th- I'm thinking since hmm. the variety of people you see, you probably have to have a variety of training. So, what kind of credentials do you have, and what programs do you go through, so that you can help maybe connect with different cultural diversities or Mm-hmm. I don't know. Do you have some language barriers, too? Maybe you do. We do. We do. Yes. Mm-hmm. So um, we have a lot of families who speak Spanish. So we have an interpreter who can either go out with us or we can do phone interpreting. Mm-hmm. So that helps. Um, there are classes that we're constantly taking on cultural diversity mm-hmm. and then child yes. development. things. Yeah. So we're, we're always in trainings, it seems right. like. Yes. Right. But, Is there like a, a garden variety degree or qualification that you need to have to work? And administer these services. You know, I'm thinking nurse, RN, or LPN. So I'm I'm just mm-hmm. trying to get a garden variety feel of yeah. It's for well, for early intervention, I'm not sure about your qualifications and over home visiting, but there's a variety. You can mm-hmm. have some nursing, a lot of early childhood mm-hmm. education, mm-hmm. and then of course child development classes are huge, so okay. that you know what's going mm-hmm. on, what to expect. We also have some social work background mm-hmm. um, that works really well, especially in the home visiting field, because a lot of the families that we're working with. Um, have some additional needs besides just parenting and so the social work um, piece comes into play too we get that too yes all right that's cool um so we've kind of talked around a lot of different goals of your programs but what do you see as the primary goal or benefit to families of the help me grow programs well i think each one is a is a little different i know Mm -hmm. um for home visiting our four main goals are to increase healthy pregnancy um, improve parenting confidence and competence, and then improve child health development and school readiness, and then just connect them to the community. And so um, research has showed that pregnant women who participate in home visiting programs are 48% um, likely to have um, low birth weights. So they're, um, we're improving um, birth outcomes there. And then um, 25% um, of children who've been in the programs are scoring higher on their math and reading tests first through third grade. So we're improving their developmental skills as well. Okay. Final breaks here. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Have you heard about Tap On It? It's a new way to get great coupons on your smartphone from all types of vendors. Hi, Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacies. So you text the words Tap On It, that's Tap On It, T A P O N I T, 82928. Tap on the link that comes up, and up comes your coupons. The Medicine Center Pharmacy coupons are buy $30 worth of merchandise at the Medicine Center Pharmacy and get $10 off. You can also earn a free first aid kit. This is a great way to save money. Tap on it at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. The Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville just got in a new load of furniture from a major department store. And also lots of new drugstore merchandise from large drug chains. Of course, all this merchandise, furniture and more is 50% off. And as a special gift to our loyal customers, we're reducing all of our furniture an additional 50% off. That's right, 50% off and an additional 50% off. Don't miss this Memorial Day sale. You'll regret it. The Half Off and Hot Buy store in Louisville. See us on Facebook or halfoffhotbuys.com. With a heart attack, every second counts. Every moment the blood supply to your heart is cut off or reduced leads to heart damage or death. Mercy Medical Center can stop a heart attack in record time. Mercy is the only hospital in the nation that can open a blocked artery right in the ER just minutes after arrival, saving lives and preventing further heart muscle damage. 
That's because Mercy's Emergency Chest Pain Center was America's first to achieve full accreditation and the first to install a fully functional cardiac catheterization lab just a few steps away from our ER doors. The average time in the U.S. from ER arrival to opening of a blocked heart artery is 64 minutes. At Mercy, thanks to our ER cath lab and the area's most experienced emergency heart care team, it's faster. We're capable of opening a blocked artery in as little as five minutes. If you have heart attack symptoms, get to Mercy. We can stop a heart attack in record time. To learn more, visit cantonmercy.org slash heart. When we hear the word pharmacy, we think prescriptions, right? Hi, Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacies in Stark and Tuscarawas Counties, a locally owned Health Mart pharmacy. Of course we carry prescriptions, but our stores carry way more than that. We have a large selection of ostomy and diabetic supplies and compression socks. All of our pharmacies carry a variety of canes, walkers, bath seats, rollators, and commodes, all at super low prices. Our rollators are only $69.95. Call or stop by our local Medicine Center Pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. We are speaking today with folks from Ohio Early Intervention and and Help Me Grow Home Visiting. Okay, mm-hmm. and we're having a very interesting exchange. So, I think you're up, aren't you, Brian? Yeah, we didn't get to cover early intervention's primary goals before the radio break. So, mm-hmm. please share with um, with our listeners your primary goals and how you can help people that are having some developmental challenges. Our primary goal is to help families enhance their child's learning and development. Um, We use everyday routines that are familiar to the child and the parent and we try to just go into the family's home and just tweak things a little bit. Things they're already doing that are going well. How can we make it better? You have things that aren't going so well. If bath time is really difficult, what can we do to improve that? But well, what what to, is the typical time that, amount of time that you would spend with a with a family or and a child and et cetera, et cetera? Okay. Uh, typically, an hour after an hour, especially when you're working with such a young population, those kiddos are kind of done with you. Yeah, you know, sure. they're ready to go do their thing mm-hmm. and, yeah. and <laughs> go have fun. So part of what we try to do, too, though, is just to, again, work right within the family's routine so that we're not invasive. It's not time to sit down and do therapy. Mm-hmm. You know, what are, what normally is going on at the, this time, and we jump right into it. So what about follow-up? Um, more visits after the initial, many, a few... Mm-hmm. That looks a little different for both programs. Right. Um, for early intervention, we could come back weekly. We could come back once a month. It really depends on the child, the parent, and how much development happens in between visits. Okay. So, again, our, we're trying to get that parent to realize that they're the best teacher. This are the things you can work on. Call me when we're ready for the next step. Uh, so do you have, um, like, a uh, second visit, like a test, uh, an oral test and th- that you talk to the child about or the parents about how do you how do you go forward it's, it's and just kind you... of ongoing mm-hmm. work and whatever challenges are coming up that's what we what we focus on and so for home visiting we meet every week for the first six months okay. to really help with that parent child engagement piece um, and things like that and then as the parent and the children improve in their parenting skills or feel more confident then we can back off a little bit maybe every other week or monthly so um, it just kind of depends on the family, really. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Obviously, your goal is to get the, the confidence of the parents as well as the child. Yes, correct. Uh, or children or, or, you know, whatever you got mm-hmm. going here. Do you do multiple families at one time? Multiple children? or Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. So. How does it go? I would think. <laughs> Wait a minute, I want to talk. <laughs> it, it can be a little challenging yeah. sometimes where you're trying to screen a child, one child and the other one wants to play with the blocks. And so yeah, the sure. home visitor and the service coordinator have to be creative mm-hmm. in what they bring to keep one child occupied while they're working with the other and, and that sort of thing. So, <laughs> But when you're fitting into those home routines, if everybody's right. home for summer break, we, we just fit right Go into what it. they're trying to do. Yeah. What's the oldest ch- child you would deal with? Three. Okay. Yeah, at age three, they transfer yeah. over. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, how about you share with our listeners your phone number? I did post it in the comments on our Facebook feed, um, but please share your contact info because, at least from what we see in the pharmacy, I'm thankful that we got to meet you and share your message today because we see, as you've heard some of our stories on or off the air, we see some things, so it'll help us make referrals. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. if a parent or loved one's listening, how do they get in touch with you all? 
Sure. So our regional central intake office number is 330-616-3322. Um, professionals can also go to either the Help Me Grow or the Ohio Early Intervention websites and download a form and fax it to 885-418-3322. And it's a fast process. It only takes a couple of minutes. Very, very mm-hmm. basic information. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And it kind of sounds like from what you said that as long as you get, I mean, if a, if a medical provider refers, doesn't sound like there's a lot of red tape. It sounds like if they're, the child has a need, you guys can step in and help. You don't have to have prior authorizations and all this crazy stuff. Is Correct. that fair? Correct. Yes. Okay. I'm yes. just thinking sometimes how hard it is to get someone yes. what they need mm-hmm. because of obstacles in the system right so as long as they answer the phone with central intake calls and yeah. say yes i'm interested in the program it starts the process okay that's it. yeah that's pretty exciting yeah. do you how about um you know with how about a tip to encourage healthy development for any caregiver out there before we part today Oh, wow. Be responsive to your child. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I feel like I've said that a million times, right. but that face-to-face interaction um, is just key. Make, yeah, making awesome. eye contact and letting them know how important they are when they yes. speak. You know, it's so easy with a child standing in or sitting in whatever in front of the television, giggling and laughing and all that, mm-hmm. to just leave it alone. Um, okay. He's doing fine, you know. Mm-hmm. He's getting a real kick. Assume it's yes. okay. He's getting yes. a real kick out of this thing, you know. And yeah, he's always laughing. learning his ABCs because they're talking about right. the ABCs. I was just going to say, all right. Yes. So, qual- so yes. speak to. Oh, but it's educational, and that's okay. Yeah. And, and it, we're not saying, you know, once you have a child who's two, three, four, five, that you shouldn't let them have any TV time. If you're having, I wouldn't put on, you know, a violent TV show and have yeah. them in the background because even when you think they're not watching. They're listening, and so they're going to pick up on some of those things. But there are some shows that can be educational. We're just saying it needs to be limited Mm -hmm. because that can't be the only thing that they're learning from. They've got to learn from the parents, the grandparents, the other siblings. There's got to be that face-to-face interaction for so much development. So what about the Mr. Rogers-type program for kids under three? And Yes, no, good, bad. There are some that I think are okay, They're but okay. it just it has to be limiting. It's limiting it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I knew yeah. when I put Barney on, I had half an hour I could cook dinner. Exactly. Yes. But, but you do have Barney on <laughs> right. all day. And you make right. that right. your yes. window exactly. and then you're done. Yes. Okay. Right. Yes. Right. A half an hour to cook, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but, what would yeah. you have, macaroni and cheese every night? I just about. When I was pregnant with my second, I used to tell my first one, Okay, put, I'm going to put on Dragon Tales, and you wake mommy up. I'm going to take a half an hour nap after yeah, work, sure. and then you. Can, <laughs> and then he was ready to play again. So. We didn't talk about sleep for the supervising uh, parents, so, but, I, but that's important it's too. Very important. So yes, you know. Yes. So did you find him outside when you? After no, he nap? would sit right on the couch with me for oh. that limited. It was only half an hour. That was the most I could get out of him. Okay. But it was just I needed that. I shut my eyes after work, and then and then we'll make dinner, and that was the plan. So. Yes, cool. <laughs> Where's that? What's diet? How's diet fit into this? I mean, do you counsel them on diet? Oh, nutrition we- is huge. Yes, okay. yes, that's a whole nother. That's a whole nother radio show that we could talk yeah, about. Sure. Nutrition is is huge because there's a lot of fast food eating, yeah. and you know, WIC provides them with all sorts of fruits and vegetables and all of that sort of thing. And so, mm-hmm. um, we're just really promoting that they utilize those resources mm-hmm. and 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 get what they need and, and really watch what they're feeding their children mm-hmm. because we're getting a lot of. So is that that's that's choices. part of your interview process? Okay, what's this child eating? Yes. You know, what's his mm-hmm. diet? You know, what's mm-hmm. a meal look mm-hmm. like? Lunch, breakfast, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's part of our curriculum. It's part of your... Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. we'll find children who have that all-white diet. They want macaroni and potatoes and bread. Yeah. yeah. And how yes. do we expand on that? So, yes. Hey, the producer's waving at me. It's time to go. Okay. So thanks very much, both of you. <laughs> Thank uh, you for very, having very us. Very enjoyable show. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jolene Bloomquist, Home Visiting Manager, and Regina Falter. Early Intervention Manager from Help Me Grow. We'd like to remind our listeners, if you suspect you have a medical issue, please contact your health care provider. Thanks to our sponsors, Mercy Medical Center, Studio Arts and Glass, Kiko Auctions, and, of course, our technical producer, J.D. DeAngelis. As always, we thank you, our listeners, for joining us on Health Matters with the Medicine Center, Phar- with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Have a healthy week. We'll see you again right here on News Talk 1480 WHBC. 
Thank you for joining us for this edition of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, your pharmacists, Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now at MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. Be sure to join us next Friday at this time for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. The preceding program was sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies.